What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at some of the top five questions that are going to come up in the 2025 Year 6 Maths Sats papers. So let's get ready to smash out these five questions. Let's go. Question one, there will always be an adding or subtracting decimals question. It's very, very common. So let's learn how to do it. The first step is always to put your column titles in place. This is the best way to not make any mistakes. So let's put ones, tens, and hundreds. Put back my decimal, tenths, one hundredths, and even one thousandths. Now I'm ready to begin. And my number 7.68 has seven ones, point six eight making sure I'm putting everything in the right columns then 13.493 has one ten three zeros decimal back in the right place four tenths nine hundredths and three one thousandths but I have these two gaping holes that need filling so I'm gonna put a placeholder in each of them won't change the value of my number but will help me again make no mistakes less important for addition super important for subtraction. Now I can start at my smallest value which in this case is my thousandths column 0 and 3 is 3. Next column 8 and 9 is 17. 6 and 4 plus my 1 is 11. Put back my decimal that's super important and at this point I can check they're all in a row that helps me realize I've made no mistakes. Then in my ones column I have a 7 and 3 which is 10 plus my 1 is 11 and then finally in the tenths column 1 and 1 is 2. So my final answer is 21.173. A couple of things really important to remember. These column titles might seem unnecessary, but it's a really good way of not making a silly mistake by putting a number in the wrong place. And one little check that we can do is to make sure all the decimals are lined up at the end. That will help us realize we've not put anything in the wrong place. Question two, here is a number. These little commas are gonna be very helpful because they group our numbers and we group them into the hundreds, the thousands, and in this case we have millions as well. So my number reads 9,658,214. It says tick the statements that are true. Now look, it says statements. Very big mistake if you only do one of them. Be very careful with reading things carefully. The digit five represents 50,000. Well, where are we? We're in this column just here. Well, let's begin by putting column titles on then. I have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and then millions. So the number five is in the ten thousands. So it's actually not a five, it's a fifty thousand. So in this case, the five does represent fifty thousand. Give it a tick. The value of the digit 9 is 900,000. Well, we can see that's clearly not true because the 9 is in the million, so I'm not going to tick this box. The digit 6 represents 6 million. Well, again, no, the 6 is in the 100,000s, so it would represent 600,000, so it's not going to get ticked. The value of the 2 is 20 tens. Now, this is a horrible little one because, look, my value 2 is in the hundreds, so it represents 200. Well, 200 is 20 tens, 20 times 10. So 20 lots of 10 is 200, and the 2 is in the 200 column, so it's in the right one. Tricks here are to realize that it says statements, which means we know we need more than one, and to read things very carefully, like this last little tricky one, try to confuse us, but just read it and understand that there are always little things we can do to help us. 20 tens is 200, and the two was in the hundreds column, so it's valued at 200, therefore it's the same. Question three, we have an adding fractions question. This will again always come up. They love giving us fraction questions. They also love giving us adding fractions where our denominators are different. So we have five twelfths added to one third. Well, what we should know about fractions, we cannot add anything if we have different denominators. So we need to find an equivalent fraction to get to the same denominator first. So let's find an equivalent fraction to this third, and let's turn this 3 into a 12. So there we go, I've turned my 3 into a 12. How did I do that? I multiplied it by 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So if I've multiplied the denominator by 4, I now need to do that to the numerator to make sure this fraction is equivalent. 1 times 4 
is 4. So my new equivalent fraction, 4 twelfths, has the same value as my 1 third, but it has a 12 as the denominator, which means I can add it super easily. Now the other thing to remember when adding fractions is that saying 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths is the same as basically saying 5 elephants add 4 elephants. I'm always going to end up with elephants. So it's exactly the same with my 12. If I'm adding 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths, I'm always going to end up with something twelfths. And how are we going to work out how many? Well, I'm just going to work out 5 plus 4 is 9. So 5 twelfths add 4 twelfths equals 9 twelfths. 5 elephants plus 4 elephants equals 9 elephants. I think that's the best way to remember it. If we're adding in twelfths, we're always going to get an answer that's also in twelfths. Question 4. We have a word problem. A class votes for a captain. Three quarters of the class vote for Sam. Let's highlight some of this important information. The remaining seven pupils vote for Alex. How many pupils are in the class? Well, we're going to need to draw a bar model. So three quarters vote for Sam. So let's get a bar and let's break it into quarters. There we go. I've got four even quarters. Three quarters of them, one, two, three, all vote for Sam. There we go. And then the remaining seven vote for Alex. So we know this section here must equal seven and they voted for Alex. So now we can see that if one quarter is seven, then each of the other quarters must be seven as well because the quarters are equivalent. So it says how many pupils are in the class? Well now all we need to do is add up all my quarters, seven, 14, 21, 28, to get my total answer of 28 students. Easy. Now the things to do here, always highlight the key information like we did, and then simply draw any information we can get out of it. And in this case, we used a bar model. We knew the class had been split into quarters, so we needed to draw our bar and then split it into quarters. We knew that three quarters of them were Sam, and one quarter was Alex, and they kindly gave us how many had voted for Alex, Therefore, we could find out the remaining information. One step at a time. Question five. We have a table. Very common. There is always a table in these exams. This table shows the number of children and adults at a child care center. Now it says complete the table to make it correct. The first row has been done for you. So if we can see the titles of the column, we have age and even years, number of children, number of adults, and number of children per adult. So if we're in the one and under category, there are 12 children, there are four adults, therefore there are three adults per one child. Let's see how that makes sense. We have 12 children, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Number of adults, we have four, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And then it says number of children per adult, so let's group them a little bit. This adult here has these three, this adult here has these three, this adult has these three, and this adult here has these three. So we can see they all have three each. Or in other words, 12 divided by my four adults equaled three. So in the two or three category, we have 20 children, and there are four adults per child. Now we need to work out how many adults. So if we can see that there are four children per adult, and there's 20 children, then all I need to do is 20 divided by my four equals five. So I have five adults. Let's check that. Now if I have my four times five, I get 20. Good. And my four or five category, we don't know how many children, but we know there are three adults, and there are eight adults per child, and there are eight children per adult. So this time I do three times my eight will give me my total of 24. So therefore there's 24 children. What I need to be good at here is understanding that the first row is giving me the formula. And in this case, it was either A times B equals C. So therefore, if I'm going the other way, I would have C divided by B would equal A and so forth. Use the top row to help you. And there you have it. That is the five top questions that will come up in the year six SATs 2025. 
Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing to the channel. But for now guys, see you in another video. Peace out.